So this story happened 15 years ago. Uh, it involves sexualities and un it's unholy. And uh, 15 years ago, I just wanna let you guys know that I just couldn't get laid. I'm shaped like a human dumpling. I look like Pikachu with diabetes. I don't look good. I don't even know how to fuck. This is what I do, like a hula hoop. This is how I fuck. So 15 years ago, um, I got a gig in uh, Las Vegas, my first headlining gig at the Riviera, and they were gonna pay me $150, thank you, one show, and <laughs> I'm making it, and uh, they wouldn't fly me out, so I had these two comics drive me to Las Vegas, Brian he's a real guy, and Aaron and um, we drive to Las Vegas, and uh, we're on Las Vegas Boulevard, we're at a stoplight, and we're in Brian's uh, Bronco, and a truck pulls up next to us, a blue truck, with two of the ugliest white girls I've ever seen in my fucking life. They were twins. They had mullets. They had Confederate flag t-shirts on. They had ass washed jeans. I'm getting hard right now. And they yell into the car, we think you're cute. They weren't talking about me. They weren't talking about Brian because Brian is the ugliest white dude I've ever seen. If you know Brian, he has no jawline or fucking chin. His neck just blends into his face. He looks like a tiki statue. Or Beaker from the Muppets. He looks awful, he has a golem body. You know how white guys have skinny arms and a belly? God damn, he's unfuckable. Anyway, guys, the reason why I just said that, I called him out because I asked him to do the story with me and he said, no, I have kids. Fuck you, Brian. That's what you get! They were talking about Aaron, and Aaron jumped out of the Bronco. He goes into the truck, and they just drive into the distance, you know what I mean? We're like, hope you don't die, you know? So we go to the Riviera, and um, it's like 9 p.m., and I tell Brian, I go, Brian, I need to write out a set list, so uh, you just do your own thing. I'll see you at the show, it's at midnight. So I go do my set list. At midnight, I show up at the Riviera, and Aaron and Brian rolls up with these two girls, and, um, Aaron pulls me aside and he says, hey, dude, um, if you're funny, they'll fuck you. <laughs> and I go, nah. <laughs> then Aaron goes, yeah, because they're white supremacists. I swear to fucking God. So then, yes, I'll do it then. <laughs> because if you're ethnic and you fuck two white supremacists, that's a win for my people. <laughs> they're gonna build a statue of me in Seoul. So I go up and I do the show and I'm pretty good, you know what I mean? I'm likable, focus groups like me. Um, I test well. And after the show, um, we go up to the room and it's debauchery. I mean, the air is thick. It's like a Cambodian jungle. You can slice the air with a machete, you know what I mean? And we were all wearing condoms. So it's two hours of just sexualities, and uh, I get the skinny one, we switch off. So... <laughs> Eventually, I have the fat one on the bed, right? One of them was fat, by the way. I'm doing doggy style, and um, Aaron has the other one in the other bed, and I look around, where the fuck's Brian? Nobody knows where Brian is. He disappeared. The, the bathroom light is off, right, so he's not in there. So I go, fuck him, I keep going, right? <laughs> then I feel something <laughs> tickle my anus. <laughs> it felt like a feather. I turn around, there's no one there. So now I think something paranormal is happening. <laughs> like it's Liberace's ghost going hi or whatever. <laughs> so I keep going, right? Then I definitely feel something <laughs> rubbing against my anus, right? Brian, had crawled underneath my body, <laughs> underneath her body, and started eating her out while I was fucking her, which makes him a warrior. <laughs> He's a fucking soldier, guys. I gave him a purple heart afterwards, seriously. I go, get the fuck out of there. He goes, she likes it, she likes it. It's all right. I keep going. I start power fucking her. You know how you do it? You power fuck? <laughs> you speak English? 
She's like, I don't know power fuck. Um, like a rabbit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and my penis slips out and it goes right into Brian's eye. I've never heard a scream that loud before. Ah! You know, this is fucking crazy. And then we stopped immediately. Putting a penis in an eye is a party stopper. I don't care where you are, right? It just ruins the mood. You can get a gold medal at the Olympics as they putting the fucking ribbon around your neck and a pee goes in your eye, it's done, okay? So anyway, we get up and uh, I take him to breakfast. <laughs> I do. Because <laughs> I'm a good person, you know what I mean? So we're at breakfast and um, we're eating bacon or whatever and uh, I look across and Brian's eye is completely closed <laughs> with a yellow film around it. I know. And I go, dude, your eye. He goes, I think we should go to the hospital, it burns. I go, nah. Put some Clorox on it or whatever. I wanted him to lose the eye just for the story. I blinded a man with my penis once. So we get in the car, it's six in the morning, I'm fucking tired. You speak English, you all right? All right, uh, we drive to the hospital and I don't know what to say. I've never t told a doctor that I poked somebody in the eye with my penis before. How, do you lie? What the fuck do you do? So Brian goes, I got it. So we're sitting there in the emergency room, doctor walks in, he says, what happened? Brian points at me, he says, he skull fucked me. <laughs> that was a story. Thank you.